Sarge Punger here on a very, very rainy Saturday morning. Let me move this guy back in there. Um, I just wanted to show you guys the uh, what I've been up to. Um, this is the uh, second section I've completed for my Chinese army for bolt action. Um, I've done the uniforms a bit differently this time. I've gone with the sort of winter uniform, the bluey gray uniform. Um, the bottle I have is called a French gray. Um, Space Wolf Gray, I guess, basically. Um, they're also from the Cobblestone Casting uh, range. Um, they're basically the exact same figures, just with different paint jobs. Uh, one guy here, this guy here, he's the only one who's has got a firing pose. Um, he's got a... He, everybody else is on the advance. And in this case, I, I put an NCO in as well, and he's got the uh, submachine gun. And, um, I don't know, I'll, I'll kind of bring him forward a little bit more, I guess, so you can see him a bit better. Um, yeah, the... you know... Um, I haven't gone with the LMGs. I have no LMG figures, so um, I've decided that they're out, and I was able to make a thousand point list with them anyway, so I figured, ah, we'll just go with that. The other thing that I've tried to do with these guys, um, I don't know if you can see it, is with the equipment and things like that, I'm trying to do some mixing match here just to sort of give them a bit more of a ragtag feel, uh, feel sorry. Um, so, you know, like the bed rolls are just of different colors, um, bags and things like that. Um, let me find a couple cases here more bedrolls. Look, this guy's bag here is, a, is more of a buff. Um, so, but basically, yeah, these are them. Um, they're pretty fun. Uh, next up, I'm going to be doing a uh, gorilla section. If you don't have the Rise and uh, Empire and Flames book, sorry, um, you should check it out. The gorilla, the gorilla section for the Chinese is pretty brutal. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make a lot of friends in my club with them. I'm doing two sections of them. So, uh, let me show you what I got up. Uh, next, the other allied army that I'm doing uh, at the moment. And, uh, and I got some other stuff I want to show you too. Hang in there. Okay, um, here's the second section that I finished uh, this week. Um, I showed you five of these guys before. They're mixed in there. Um, the other seven are new. Um, they're the ones that I finished this week. Um, so this is uh, a winter uh, Soviet rifle platoon. Um, like I've said before in my last video, uh, I'm trying to go for a like November, December 1941 defense of Moscow, you know, Operation Typhoon counter force. So, again, these guys, I've, I've kind of mixed and matched their uniforms. Um, you know, um, sorry about the camera work. I'm, I'm doing this as a weird angle, but... Um, so, you know, there's khakis and browns and sort of maroons and olive drabs and things in there. Sort of like, okay, they're just rounding up anybody, you know, and just giving them a gun kind of thing. Um, but uh, this squad, they're not the free squad, so I've got my 12 guys, so that's... Uh, how many points is there? I think it works out to 108. So they got. I'm going to give them the anti-tank rifle. Uh, anti, pardon me, the anti-tank grenades. Um, and uh, they're inexperienced and they're green. So if they take a shot that could go regular. We never know. But uh, the army that I'm planning to do is a pretty big horde army for a thousand points. And I, when I play it, I'm going to play it in that style of, you know, forward. You know, divide, divide kind of thing. So, but uh, yeah, they've all got rifles. I've gone in and a couple of these guys. For example, this guy, I'm, I'm kind of particularly proud of this guy. You know, I just give him a bit of extra equipment and things like that. This guy with the uh, grenade, you know, I, I got on and can't see, maybe can't see the grenade in his hand. But just got online, and, you know, just to see exactly how the equipment looked like that. Because I really want them to sort of look cool. Um, they're going to die like flies, that I know. But, you know, uh, I want them to look cool while that's happening. Uh, I've got a couple other things I'm going to show you. Um, and uh, that'll be it. This, it wouldn't be a video for me unless I somehow shoehorn some kind of German stuff into it. So here it is. Uh, this is a 148 to me, a martyr. Um, I put this together while I was imprisoned at work on Saturdays. Uh, I painted it at home. Um, it's a really nice kit to do. Uh, I've left it so that, of course, the gun can move, which is perfect. Um, the crew guy, I don't know what happened to him, he has vanished, so I'm going to have to find another crew guy. Um, I did this with the airbrush, and this is the first time I, I used uh, the Tamiya sort of pastels, and I think it turned out really, really well. There are some things on it I don't really like. Um, I do have a new airbrush because the one that I had broke, so some of the striping on it is kind of eh, a bit too much. But all in all, I think it's okay, you know, for something I can squeeze into my list. I haven't done the interior, you know, for give, I feel that there should be like a, a war gamer, uh, you know, confession booth, forgive me father, I haven't done the interior of my martyr. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, the kit itself was, uh, I think about, how much did it cost me? 
in American dollars, I don't know, maybe about 11 bucks, maybe 10 ish. I don't know, something like that. Um, and seeing one when I went to uh, the museum in uh, Germany was, was really something. And so uh, it, it really kind of, you know, inspired me to get this, this guy cranked out. Um, anyway, um, I've also got some other stuff I want to show you, some work in progress kind of stuff. Uh, and let you know what else I'm up to. So hang in there. Okay, this is what's kind of going on here. When I say kind of, I mean kind of, sort of. Um, uh, you'll remember a couple of videos ago, I, I uh, did the Kirk Knispel uh, Stozy's Heroes figure and I uh, had as my 111th subscriber giveaway, and it went to Games with Sarge. Um, and he's got it, and I'm happy. I'm glad that he liked it, which is perfect, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, so in the kit itself, in the pack, you get uh, the turret version of Kurt, and here he is. I've done only the flesh on him right now. Um, I still have to do the uniform, and this is what the beast he's going to be in, which is the Tamiya 140th Tiger 1 late production. Um, on December 23rd in Tokyo, there is a Tokyo Armored Fighting Vehicle model show. Um, I wanted to get this thing done uh, by then, but it looks like it's becoming more and more of an impossibility um, because, uh, you know, like the weather this morning, work is raining down on me. And uh, there's no way I can get it done. So this year I'm going to go. Don't worry, I'm going to take some photos. I'll, I'll put them up on here as sort of a New Year Christmassy video of what I've been up to. Um, that's in the future here in a couple weeks, two months, I guess. And um, and that's good too because then I can see what you know everybody else's level is at, and you know where do I got to improve, and and you know you know how am I going to make mine sort of pop for maybe the next year or a different show. Um, but I want to show you some reference I got for this because it's some some books that I picked up while I was away, um, and uh, I think they're really cool, so I'd like to share them with you. Okay, first up for some reference um, that I picked up while I was away is a book called uh, In the Panzer IV and Tiger on the Eastern Front by Alfred Rubel. This is the Personal War Diary of Alfred Rubel from December 39 to May 45. Um, it's a great book here. It's really cool. It's got a lot of reference photos of uh, the Eastern Front. Um, I mean, just just... I mean, there are tank photos. <laughs> there they are. Um, so here we got uh, the Panzer IV. Um, I guess that's the one he started out on. We got pictures of, uh, I guess it's back block. I think it's block, anyway. And just his different citations and things like that. But it also gives you an idea, especially if I'm going to be doing um, some of the diorama, more dioramic stuff. Uh, here's a great shot, here we go, of, uh, um, for the tiger and stuff like that. So there's some great shots here, just this kind of stuff here. You know, it's really cool to check out. And it's got lots of maps and things like that. So that's kind of a cool book that I picked up. Um, another one that I picked up, and this is the one that I'm really using for reference. Um, this is the, the story of a legendary weapon, the, the tiger. And um, it's by the same publisher. I bought it in the same place. Basically, this is all about the tiger and, uh, you know, it, it explaining where it was fighting and things like that. Um, oh, <laughs> a lot of this I can't read, of course. Um, but yeah, so it'll give me some shots, you know, and ideas on how to do camo, things like that for this model, because I really want this model to go well, and uh, I really want to sort of up my game. Sorry about it, I'm just flipping through pages here that have no, you know, reference or whatever. Um, but of course, you know, you gotta, you gotta give everybody some love, so, um, this one is for the Winter Soviets that I'm doing, this is a book I picked up, I got this for a pound off my friend, uh, Thomas Greenwood, when I went to the UK, Great Patriotic War. Um, <clears throat> he was getting rid of all of his books. This is a fantastic picture book. It has got so much stuff in it from the Eastern Front. Um, you know, just, just, like, I mean, check this out. Look, look at that. I mean, that would be great, you know, in, in, a, in a bolt action setting. So these are some cool things. So this is a great book, too. Um, other things, other thing, a little small announcement. Oh, two small announcements, actually. Um, here, I'll just put, I'll put the martyr here so you have something to look at uh, while I talk. Um... The year of my painting has ended. Um, basically, every year from October 25th, uh, I sort of have my New Year painting. Um, this year, uh, I was able to do uh, 301 things. Um, I did uh, 290 figures and 11 vehicles. So I've been keeping track. It hasn't been my best year, but I didn't have to go away back and forth to, to Canada quite a bit. So I was out of action for quite a bit. And uh, the other thing is, I don't know if I've done it yet. Maybe it's already happened. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to change the name of the channel from Jemuzu Von Shipangu to JVC Paints. Um, the reason is uh, no one can say that name. And it was it was really kind of hindering me. People were like, oh, Von Shipangu, you know, nobody could say it. Basically, my name is James, but the pronunciation in this country is Jemuzu. Okay, so that's Jemuzu. Shipangu is the first 
Western name for Japan. It's Portuguese. They called it Sipangu, I guess, instead of Nippon or whatever. So that's where the name came from. But anyway, I'm going to change it. But however, my desk, my home desktop uh, PC is giving up the ghost. So I've got to kind of do it at work. And it's one of these things that, like, well, is the boss looking? I don't know, you know. So, anyways, you guys take it easy. Have a good weekend. Um, we'll talk to you later. Keep those brushes moving and all the best. Bye bye.